surprise, surprise, I have another setup. But this time, it's a little bit more conducive to doing tutorials and such because I feel like you guys really liked my previous tutorials, so I feel like I'm gonna do some more going forward. If you'll notice that the setup kind of looks like something a Twitch streamer would have, and that is because, in fact, I do stream on Twitch now. Mostly playing games, but sometimes I do designs, and you can check out the link in the description box below. I stream on at least Tuesday and Thursday nights at about 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes I'll get in some more. I'm kind of building that up a little bit, so if you'd like to see me play some games and occasionally do some live designs, go check me out on there. Today's tutorial is actually going to be about what you just saw when I was talking about my Twitch streaming. That's because it's very important sometimes to have visual cues to share things like your Instagram, your Twitter, any kind of social media platform or other things that you want to draw attention to every video, even if it's not about those two things. Today we're going to be doing things in Photoshop and After Effects. Now you can do it in other programs, but today's tutorial is going to focus on these two programs specifically. So let's jump right into it. So we're going to jump straight into Photoshop first. I already have the designs ready to go, but I want to show you guys the setup first and then how we put it into After Effects. So we're going to start with our canvas being at 1920 by 1080 pixels at a 300 resolution and it doesn't matter what background I always try to start with dark colors um, but if you are working with mostly light colors you might want to pivot towards that set your guides if you if you're not sure how to do that you can just turn on rulers I always do it in percent because I'm usually only focused on the center so now I have my setup so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the layers that I created into this new thing and then center it. So usually when you would make this you'd already have it editable. In this case I already know what I want to do so I have this set up and you don't have to do it this exact color but I thought hey it'd be kinda cool because I'm gonna be showing Twitter and Instagram together that I would have um, the Instagram icon colors as the gradient for this and you can find that hex code either online You can guess or you could always take a screenshot of the icon and pull it up yourself But the two shape, but it's two layers for a reason and that's for animation reasons So I've created a template for this little kind of diamond this like rounded diamond uh, And that's what I'm going to put my icons on in this case. It's Instagram and then I have a little bar that is the part that actually has my handle on it and it's pretty legible the what I like to tell people is whatever you do make it really small after you've made it and if you can still read it from a something slightly smaller than you would see on a phone you're good but I think it's always a good rule of thumb when possible to make sure that you can have something be legible from as far away as possible now what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to save out each part individually so I'll hide the background and first I'm gonna save only the square part of it and as you can see I already have these sa saved out so I'm going to just pretend like that so you would save it as that so I'm gonna call that one insta square save this one separately same thing save as PNG insta bar and then when you go into them let's say that uh, they're not cropped properly so you could probably set it up better to be cropped already, but what you could do in case is you'll open it up and it may be like this, where it's got the space saved behind it. What you can do is you can, if you're on PC control, if you're on Mac do um, command, you click control click on the layer and then hit C, turn on your crop tool and it should and hit enter twice and it should crop to the size of that. Now, so that's pretty straightforward and you can do that with any of them. So now we're gonna jump into After Effects and this is gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna put it in a 1920 by 1080 size. Now if you're working in 4K, you could always design things a little bit bigger but I pretty much always do 1080 so I'm going to do it in 1920 by 1080 here. So I've got my new, and. So I've got my new composition and it's about three seconds long because it doesn't need to be that long. And the first thing I'm going to do is what I've already done, which is import the images. So in this case, I'm going to do Instagram bar net. So first thing you need to do, get the order correct, hit P on your keyboard for position. Oops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> 
and then just kind of position it where it needs to be. Now in this case, um, both are not centered. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select both and then click with my mouse and hold shift to kind of move it till it looks centered. Now you can use a line, but in this case, it, ideally you would wanna center it in your Photoshop file first. But now I've got everything set up the way I want. So the animation I'm gonna show you today involves creating some kind of alpha mat. So the same thing can be applied to both layers. You just have to do the same thing twice. So we're gonna start with our bar first. We're gonna hide the square. I'm gonna go up to here to make a shape. It doesn't matter what, sh what uh, color it is. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of guesstimate uh, where I want it to be visual, where I want it to be seen. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have it cover the area, but just barely over. All right, that looks good. Put it directly over the layer that you're gonna be using the track mat for. Then make sure you go to track mat, click, oops, sorry, go to the bar and then alpha mat to shape one. Now, it doesn't look different, but if I were to go here to the layer, hit P for position and then move it, you'll notice it gets cut off, which is exactly what we wanna do. So before I do the next one, I turn back on the Instagram square and do the same thing. Just kind of get a shape, have it be slightly bigger. And that's not what we want. <laughs> it masked it for me. So make sure you unselect it, then you do shape. See, you guys get to see the real side, not just like a cut and dry tutorial. You get to see me make mistakes. And it doesn't need to be much. I'm probably gonna do the same length and then hide the contents because I don't need to alpha mat shape two. cool so when you're looking at it you'll notice that the shape layers are hidden and that's because they are just there for creating a clipping mask essentially if you're familiar with that so what we're gonna do now is animate each thing individually so I'm going to start with the square and if I'm working on something that's independent of another object, I like to hide the objects that I'm not working on, but you can keep both visual, but this will make sense. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is click on my square and then I'm gonna do position because I'm gonna have this slide into frame first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is have the position, so it's already where it needs to be, so find where you're going to have it get to that point. And I'm gonna make this a really fast animation because I want the text to be shown for as long as possible and the animation to be quick, but you don't have to do it that way. So I'm gonna go about 10 frames, hit position, and then go back to the start. Make sure that your stopwatch is enabled. Don't click this again or you'll lose your progress. And I want it to come from right to left. So I'm going to take this and just, you can type a number, but I like to move it. Oh, and make sure the motion blur. I use motion blur, you don't have to, but it looks a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna take that and practice. Uh, and you'll see I didn't position it far enough because you can see the motion. So I'm going to move it even more. Now we're out and then just press play real quick. That's pretty fast, but I like that. The other thing we're gonna do, because the way I did mine, is we're gonna do rotation. So we'll go to the same anchor points. We're gonna click on your layer, click R for rotation. Same thing. We're going to do one time, because I'm gonna have it spin one time. Click that there, go back to the beginning. Click zero, boom. And now when it comes in, it's too fast, but it should spin. So, you know, in this case, if it's too fast, and you want it to be a little bit more apparent. Let's say maybe we can do it by frame, so about there. Move it about here. Try that. Yeah, that's pretty good. You can kind of see it. Oh, no. There we go. There's the spin, see? I'm not gonna leave these mistakes out. I want you guys to see kind of the 
oops, I made a mistake. Um, so now as you can see, as you trace it, you see it rotating and I have it going the opposite way. So maybe what you could do, if you want it to spin the correct way, is do negative 360, one. So that way when it's coming in, it's tumbling to the left. Pretty simple. So now, that's good to go. So I'm gonna hide that. And leave this where, because I'm gonna have the bar up here afterwards. So I'm gonna leave my um, tracker right where it completes. Just to make this easier. Turn that on. I've already got it on position. So what we're gonna do, just so you can help remember where you are, you could always go ahead and hit position here. And we're gonna go about this far ahead. I'm gonna go to 30. Click the small diamond to click your create your keyframe again. We'll go back and then this is gonna go from left to right. So we have to take this and do, I think it's about negative 625 if I remember correctly. Oh, not quite far enough. And there we go. And this way, turn on your motion blur. Don't forget that. It slides in right after that. So if we turn on both layers now, it should look like this. Ah, and you saw that? That's because of where my bar is. And again, this is the beauty of just kind of adjusting things. So what I'm gonna do is shorten it by pressing V to have my mouse. That's probably not exactly how I wanna do it, but move it this way and that should be good. Some things you'll have to eyeball a little bit. That's pretty good. Now, you could have it fade out, you could have it just turn off, but what I like to do, especially with animations like this, is more or less reverse it. So what we're gonna do now, so what was that, about 15? Yeah, so we'll go here, what was that, 59? Doing a little math, there, oops. Two seconds, 35 milliseconds. And you can always adjust this. So now, because we want to do the reverse, you go to where you think it'll be. And you will click the keyframe again because it's going to start from there. You don't want it tr to transform during that period. Excuse me. Go back to the end and do the reverse position again. So negative, let's do 700. I think that's correct. So there's no rotation involved with the bar, so I'm happy with that. Go back to our Instagram square. And along the same points, actually before the same points, we're gonna go, because we want it to animate, the bar to animate first. So I did that in, incorrectly, but this is a good way to have things be the same length of time. We're all learning in this together. So we're gonna take the position Click it again on the keyframe, go to the end, spin it back, put it back, and then on the rotation, because it's going this way, now we're gonna do it actually 360 degrees. So we'll do that there, and then we'll go to, since that was negative one, we'll do zero. So it should spin that way, yep. But we wanna do this first. So we're gonna select those keyframes, Move it back, and that way when this ends, that should go away. Pretty simple. So let's take a quick look at it. And if you wanna make sure that you have transparency, if you look here, you should see a toggle transparency grid. And if you see that while you scroll, you're good to go. And I'll show you how to save it as transparent in just a moment. So we'll turn that back on so we can see it. Press play. And I'm pretty happy with that, and I have it to where it loops. It's a, it's a pretty long animation, but I want the reader to be able to see it for as long as I can. But you can do a shorter animation, so notice how it gets to about there. Oh, <laughs> I had it right the first time. Okay, see, this is why you learn with me. Because <laughs> we learn our mistakes together. 
I got the animation the way I wanted it, but everything is reversed. So we're going to take go back, do this again, move our points, and this way the bar disappears first, which is what we wanted in the first place. There we go. And it should almost look like in that loop, it should look like it just immediately goes back and forth. So there we go. Now it's good. So I like to go select all. We're going to go to file and then export render queue. You can do media, uh, the Adobe media thing, but this is actually pretty easy. So you can do the settings however you want, but the most important thing is to save it out so that way the alpha goes away. So what you want to do with that, you go to lossless, bring this in the frame, and we're going to go format QuickTime where it says under video output, where it says channels, you go to RGB plus alpha, hit OK, save it what you want. We're going to call this one test insta, save, render that, it'll play through it, then you'll hear a sound when it happens, and boom, we're done. Okay, so now I've got my Premiere Pro open. So I already have something set up so you can see it in a moment. But what I'm going to do so I can see it first, let's pretend this is the project that I'm working on. I'm going to click into here, and we're going to load in our file called Test Insta in this case. Drop it in. And if you want ever want to see something full screen while you're previewing in, um, Premiere, or in Premiere, you just click on that panel and click the tilde key, and it should full screen it. So I'm going to hit play. Not bad, and it's even smoother, and that a lot of that has to do with the fact that the I was looking at it at a lower quality preview on After Effects, so that way I could see it go by faster, and also it depends on the frame rate of what you're importing it in. So in this case, I think I have it at 30, I have it at 60 frames per second. I believe my project was at two. That's pretty smooth. And then you just adjust it how you want. So I'll show you how I set it up for my personal one. I probably could have done it better since I'm using two logos at the same time, but I copied the same animation twice for Twitter and Instagram. And this is what you'll see on my screen. So you'll see it play like this. I don't know why it stuttered there. Let's try, let's try that again so you can see it. And I can place that wherever. So in this case, like just because I was setting this up, at the time that it's in the center but realistically and this is why I have this um, the safety margins up which you can go to click the the wrench and then you go to safe margins to show it um, I'll probably move these further down which you will see in the final product and then there you go you've already got it put in there and for future references you could always nest them together and copy and paste that into you either render it out as it is in its position and everything with the alpha mat or you could just copy and paste it in case you need to change something out and put it in your next project wow so that was super helpful that's something i just came up to, with because i knew i was needing something for my youtube videos and also i've been diving a little bit more into after effects because it's not exactly my forte and i wanted to do some more of it um, that i can use at work for my personal business and also for my twitch streaming so i hope you guys really enjoyed this uh tutorial i hope it was helpful if you liked what you saw please give me a subscribe hit the bell notifications because i will be doing more of these very soon and let me know down below uh, what you did and which platforms you wanted to show off in your videos and if you do any kind of animation or if any of my tutorials help you out please leave me a comment with a link to your final result i would love to check it out i'll comment on all of the comments about it so just let me know and until next time i'll see you guys in the next video